Let's turn to Mark chapter 5, and we'll start with verse 25, 525. And as we're reading the scripture, this is one of my favorite, really, stories in the Bible. And, and many of you are familiar with it, and I pray that you get some insight on the scripture tonight that will guide you through this year and, and just get you to a place where you say, realize, I need some vision from God. It's really important. Let's look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 25. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors over the years. She had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. She had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touch his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out from him so he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my robe? His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Then the frightened woman, trembling, realizing of what had happened to her, came and fell at her knees in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Wow. I love this portion of scripture. So let's look at this scripture. And I really want to cover five reasons why Vision is so important. Here we see a woman that was suffering for 12 years with constant bleeding. She suffered a great deal from many doctors. She has spent every single penny she had trying to find a solution to get some healing. She had gotten no better. It only got worse. But this is what vision does. Vision allows you to get through a difficult time. So I would say this, number one, vision makes you tenacious. Say it with me. Vision makes you tenacious. And tenacious means it keep, you keep a firm hold. You don't let it go. What got this, what, how did this lady get through 12 years of suffering how does she get through spending every single dime trying to fix her problem? I could see if it got a little bit better. But the truth was, it didn't get better. There was no signs of improvement. It only got worse. What got her through was the vision that she had. She had a vision. I'm not going to remain in this condition there's going to be a day I'm going to be healed. And I'll keep fighting for my healing until the day I die. But I have a vision. One day I won't have this condition anymore. She could have easily become a victim in her mind. Or maybe start thinking, if it was God's will, it would already happen. After all, it's been 12 years. You know what this story does? It reminds us to just continue believing in the vision. Maybe you've been believing for something and it feels like it's taken forever. But this lady had 12 years and God put this story in, in the Bible for us to remember. Hey, it might be a long time. You may go back, maybe go through the situation, but don't you give up. Hold on to the vision. Be tenacious. I want to talk about even being tenacious. Only the tenacious 
will see a vision or the vision come to pass. In Galatians 6, 9, it says this. Let's not get tired of doing good because in time, because in time, we'll have a harvest if we don't give up. In time. I don't know when the time is, but it'll be in time if we what? Don't give up. How did she get her breakthrough? She got her healing because she never gave up. So that's number one. Vision makes us tenacious. That's why vision is so important. But there's another reason why vision is so important. Vision gives us a target to aim at. We see in the next verse, she, in verse 27, it says, she had heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. She had a target. And you say, what was her target? Her target was Jesus. And she said, if I could just touch his robe, I will be healed. See, her target wasn't the healing. Her target was Jesus. And she knew if she got Jesus, she would get her healing. See, if you have Jesus, you get your freedom. If you have Jesus, you get restored. If you have Jesus, you can have his peace. If you have Jesus, you can get a turnaround. If you have Jesus, you could overcome. Her aim became Jesus. What was her vision? Jesus. Maybe tonight you've been aiming after a blessing, but you forgot to aim at the blessor. And if you would get Jesus, you would get it all. He's the key to every area and everything that you're going through that's maybe suffering. See, you don't need a business breakthrough. You need Jesus, the, the source of breakthrough. And then he'll help you with your business. He'll help you with your marriage. He'll help you with your children. He'll help you with your education. He'll help you with every part of your life. So she had a vision. What was her vision? Jesus. What was her aim? Jesus. What was her target? Jesus. And maybe you're in the same condition as her. You've tried everything. She tried the doctors. And the scripture says she spent every single penny on the doctors. Maybe today you're out here or you're out there and you're thinking, if I could just if that person, if I could just get him in front of me, they could help me. Or if I could take this, it would fix me. Or, but you've, been, you've tried all of it, but there's still an emptiness inside of you. You haven't been able to fix it. She tried everything. She tried all the doctors. They failed her. She suffered for years. She, she spent all her money. It only got worse. And she looked like she was at the end of a rope. I think she was. But then Jesus shows up. It's so Amazing how God shows up when you're at the end of your rope. When you've tried everything else there is and you've tried it and you found out, man, I'm still empty. Man, it hasn't worked. I'm still in the same position. I feel like I'm not making any progress until someone comes to you and tells you about Jesus. Jesus showed up right on time for her. And why would you say right on time? Because she tried everything else. And maybe if Jesus would have showed up a little sooner in her life, she would have said, nah, I got one more move still. I got one more doctor to go to. I still got a little bit more money left. Jesus, I think I can still fix this. If you're at the end of your rope and you've tried everything else, you're in a great place for a Jesus breakthrough. A Jesus miracle. Get your vision off that and let's put it on Jesus, the source of everything that you need. You know, Jesus, who's Jesus? Well, he's the creator of the universe, that Jesus. Jesus is the, is the word. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word was made flesh. It's Jesus. That Jesus that created the heavens and earth. That Jesus created you. That Jesus that walked on water. That Jesus that rose, the, rose people from the dead. That Jesus that resurrected from the dead. That Jesus is there available for you. Let's get our focus and our vision back on Jesus for 2021. 
I love it. She tried everything. She tried everything. And then she tried Jesus. So now she had heard about him, heard about him. I just want to say something about that is that she built, got a vision after she heard about the word or she heard the word or she heard about Jesus. Her faith was built the same way all of our faith is built. How does she have faith to touch Jesus and get healed? She heard that Jesus was a healer. She heard the miracles that he did in the last village. And she started thinking, maybe this is the way you need to start thinking. Put yourself in this story. You know what she did before she had her own story? She put herself in someone else's story. So she heard maybe about a leper that got healed or maybe she heard there was a blind man now was seeing and then she started thinking right about that situation. She didn't start getting jealous because someone else got a breakthrough. Here I am, 12 years working on this miracle and nothing's happening. And this person comes out of nowhere and they get their breakthrough. She didn't say to herself, well, you know, I, um, I know he did it for them, but I don't think he'll do it for me. She thought different. She put herself in the middle of the story of the blind man and she said, well, if Jesus could heal that blind man that was blind since his birth and he's 20 some years or 30 years later gets healed, I've only had my condition for 12 years. I'm sure the same Jesus that healed that leper, that same Jesus that rose that little girl from the dead, that same Jesus that healed that blind man, I'm sure that same Jesus, he's here walking through my town. I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence that we're hearing this word. You know, we need to stop allowing the enemy to talk us out of our own personal breakthrough. Thinking it's for everybody else. No, this word is for you. What are the chances of you hearing this word right now in this, at the beginning of the year and you're going through what you're going through and Jesus is now walking through your home. He's walking, he's walking, sitting down right next in your car. He's speaking to you saying, I'm here. You've tried everything else. How about me? I love it. So she put herself in the story and she says, that's me. You know what she did? She convinced herself that today was her day. Wow, what have you been convincing yourself of? Are you convincing yourself that this year is my year? It doesn't matter how it's turning out. It doesn't matter how 2020 went, 2021, I mean 2020 went. Today's your day. You decide right now with Jesus, this is going to be a great year. It's going to be effective. I will be productive. There will be some wins. I will overcome. I am not defeated. I am not a victim. It's not over. She had to have all that conversation. So a vision will give you a target to aim at. And today I want to give you a vision of Jesus. That as you're hearing what Jesus did for her, that you would say, if he did it for her, hmm, maybe he'll do it for me. But there might be another voice that will say, no, not you. Never you. It's always somebody else. You know that. You'll be passed over, over and over and over. And plus, there's a big crowd. What makes you think that you'll even get close enough to touch Jesus? And how foolish are you going to look dry, diving through the crowd, going on the floor, humbling yourself, and touching the hem of his garment. That sounds really ridiculous. And a matter of fact, you know this, you have a bleeding condition. Everybody knows you have a condition. And since they know you have that condition, you're not even supposed to be really around those people because they already had, they were, you know what the law, because back in those days, the law was if you had a bleeding condition, you were considered unclean. Well, anytime this lady would show up somewhere, this was the rule or this was the law. She would have to yell, unclean, unclean, unclean. Every time she was near somebody, because she was considered a person that was unclean because she had a bleeding issue and they would consider her somebody that was contagious or cursed. And if you had contact with her, 
the curse or the contagion will come upon you. So she lived in this shame for years, years, saying unclean, unclean. And then the crowds would move away from her. She was a person that had no close relationships. She was all by herself. It would have been so easy for her to say, I don't think the conditions are right. This is the worst condition. There's a huge crowd here. But she finally had to say, nah, today is my day. And I don't care about all these people that are here. They might just be, be, be trying to be entertained. And they might be against me. And they might talk about me. But today I'm going to get my breakthrough. I've been waiting for this moment for 12 years. And finally, I have a promising, promising vision. Wow. Because I've seen the track record of Jesus. So she had heard about Jesus. So she came around behind him. And you know what? Another reason we need vision. I'll tell you another reason we need, another reason that vision is so important. Number one, vision makes us tenacious. Number two, vision gives us a target to aim at. What does it give us? Say what? What was her target? Jesus. And if she got Jesus, she'd get everything else. If you get Jesus, you get everything else. Number three, Vision protects our minds from destructive thoughts. For she thought, if I can just touch his robe. This is what the scripture actually says. It says, for she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Now, what's cool about this is she has some really good self-talk. And you got to be careful with your self-talk because your self-talk will either lead you towards a great life, vision, victory, or your self-talk will defeat you before you even tried. Self-talk. We got to be careful. So she had self-talk and she said this, she thought to herself, if, if, she said to, or she talked to she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. So what was consuming her thoughts? What was consuming her thoughts was this vision of touching Jesus and being healed. That was really important because if there was another thought that was consuming her, she would have not got a, a miracle. See, there's a fact, there's a fact. Any area that you have vision in, whether it's family, or it's business, or it's health, or it's ministry, or, or whatever that area is that you have vision in, you'll have advancement in, fulfillment in. Any area that you have no vision in, this is the opposite. You will never advance in. You will never see fulfillment in. Her thought that she had at that moment and what she was saying to herself would determine that her health, her well-being for the rest of her life. She had a moment to have, there's a moment, and very, this moment's important. At the beginning of the year, she began to define the moment and she saw a vision. I see myself healed after this moment. If I could just touch his garment, I will be healed. Wow, that thought alone was good. That thought is what opened the door for a great miracle. So it protects our minds. This is what I've learned. When your thoughts are either, they're either right thoughts or wrong thoughts. I would say they're, they're faith-filled faith thoughts or doubt-filled thoughts. They say I can or they say I can't. They say I'll forgive or they say... I won't forgive. It could be forgiveness thoughts or unforgiveness thoughts. Um, it, it, your thoughts can be angry thoughts or, or you could say, you know what, I'm not going to let anger control me. And then you have peaceful thoughts. But it's up to you. But this is what I've learned. You can't have both thoughts at the same time. The moment I decide to believe I can, I have an I can't mentality, I no longer can have an I can mentality. See, if she, the moment she gave up the vision, she would not have the fulfillment. It would have been all over. See, the enemy's after your thought process, your vision. 
Because once your vision is gone, the Bible says, without vision, people perish. That means that if they just don't stay neutral, they go backwards. They even die. They spiritually die. This lady was fighting for a vision, fighting for a miracle, fighting for, let's just say this, we're fighting, fighting for a soul, fighting for a healing, fighting for a ministry. She was fighting the fight of faith, but she had this vision. It captured her mind. Now, this is cool because if, if the right thought, if the word of God consumes your mind, I got good news for you. Depression can't consume your mind. Defeat cannot consume your mind. Fear can't consume your mind. Death can't consume your mind. Spirits, um, thoughts of suicide cannot consume your mind. Uh, crazy thoughts cannot consume your mind because your mind is consumed with the word of God. And when your mind's consumed with the word of God, there's hope, there's joy, there's peace, no matter how the circumstance looks like. Let's read this scripture that talks about your mind being consumed. We know what her mind was consumed with. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. She was, pray, pray, she was playing this whole miracle in her mind. Look at this. Um, it's, in, it's in Isaiah 26.3. Look what it says. It says, you will keep him or her in perfect peace. Who will keep us in perfect peace? God will keep us in perfect peace. Now, now, I want, I think the most valuable asset, the greatest blessing I could ever have is have some peace in my life. I, my mom taught me as a young man, she goes, never ever give up your peace for anything. If you have no peace, don't step into it. Don't give up your peace in exchange for a car, in exchange for a debt, in exchange for a sin, in exchange for anger, unforgiveness. Don't give up your peace for nothing. But the Bible says here that God will keep us in perfect peace. The greatest joy that I have in life is just peace. Today I have peace. And I gotta, this is how, I, this is how we, God keeps me and you in perfect peace. Look what it says right here. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Who gets the perfect peace? Who's those that keep their minds consumed with the word of God or the vision of God or the ideas of God or the dreams of God. And if we keep our minds on Jesus, keep our minds on the Lord and trust him, this is what he's saying. This is what I'll do. This is what God says I'll, he'll do. He'll give you perfect peace. Does anybody want some perfect peace in life? How many want 2021 to be a, lie, a year of peace? How do you get it? You meditate on the word of God, not your problems, not what your enemy has said, not your past, not your failures, not regret. Forget about the past. We've all messed up. Your answer is not in the past. Your answer is in Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe and the one that has vision for your future. Oh, I love God. He's bigger than our past. He's bigger than her past. He's bigger than her sickness. He's bigger than her defeat. He's bigger than her losses. He's bigger than her financial problems. She had her vision on the, in the right place on Jesus. So vision is really important because it protects our minds from destructive thoughts, loneliness, despair, suicidal thoughts, regret, unworthiness. So now, vision, I mean, reason number four that that vision is so important. Vision pushes us to take action. Someone say, take action. See, with every vision that God gives you, this is what, he, what comes with it. So God gives you a vision, whatever the vision is. You know, we have a vision. I'll give you some vision for 2020 and for our church. We have a vision that we're going to launch a church in Pomona this year. We have a vision that we're going to launch another church in San Bernardino this year. Uh, we talked about this. McDonald's has four locations. The way we're allowed to at least have to have four locations. McDonald's ain't, is not going to outdo us. Right? So we're going to have four, three, four locations here in San Bernardino as well. 
We have a vision to open up a, a foster home, a, a transitional home for foster girls that have aged out. That's going to happen. We have a vision to finally open up our food warehouse. It's right around the corner. It might be next month. We're ready to open up. But before that became a reality, it first started out as a vision. We have a vision to reach 3,000 new families this year. Everyone reaching one for 2021. It's a vision. And this is what's so awesome. With every vision comes a plan. So God will never give you a vision without a what? It's called a plan of action. It's not just a plan. It's a plan of action. So what God will do is give you a vision that's beyond your ability. And then he'll give you a plan to accomplish the vision with his ability. So now God gives us a vision. And he gave her a vision. God gave her this vision. You can be healed. He goes, but you have to take some action. You can't just have a vision with no action. I want to grow spiritually. Well, then maybe you need to join Leadership University. Or maybe you need to set a time, some time every single day from, you know, 5.30 to 6.30 every morning or 5.30 to 6 o'clock, half hour, 15 minutes, whatever it is. Every day you wake up a little bit earlier and you spend time with the Lord. With every vision, there's an action plan. Maybe you need to come in and join um, our growth track. We just started our growth track on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. I'm teaching on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Pastor Robert's teaching. I don't know what your action plan is. Maybe you want to start a business and you need to right now some education or, or you want to go to the next level. I don't know what your next step is. Maybe you need a business plan and you need to take some action on that. But every vision comes with an action plan. God gave her an action plan. This is what he told her. This is what he told her. Just reach out, touch the hem of his garment, and you'll be healed. How does she think of that? I mean, because nowhere in Scripture that I could find someone actually touched the bottom of someone's robe and they got healed. I mean, these studies on all this stuff, that, well, this is why. I understand maybe why. But the truth was, there's nowhere in Scripture that this miracle is displayed and someone did exactly what she did and got a miracle. The idea... The vision came from God. And what God did, he told her, this is how you do it, baby. Because faith without action is dead. So you can have a vision, but if you never take action on it, it'll never come to pass. It'll be inoperative. There was a day that God gave me a vision to start the Wayworld Outreach. That was great. I could have talked about it till I was blue in the face. But until I got on the streets of San Bernardino and started knocking on doors and loving people and investing in them, the church would never be birthed. There's an action step. I want grace. See, it's great to have a prophetic word spoken over you, but don't stop there. I'm going to do this or I'm going to accomplish this. That's really good. Speak the vision. But there has to be a day that you receive the vision you get a plan of action, and then you take action, and then when you take action, it releases the miracle working power of God. So she reached out. She said, what do you do? Dive. Touch the hem of his garment. I don't know how that's going to heal me. Just do it. Boom, she does it. And what happens to her? She gets what? Immediately she gets healed after 12 years of suffering. And the reason I said after 12 years of suffering, because it was immediate, but it wasn't immediate. She was 12 years fighting with this, fighting to get this miracle. Believing, holding on to a vision. That's not always easy. But there's a scripture here I want to share with you. Everything comes with an action. Every vision comes with an action plan. Um, without an action plan, it remains a dream, a want, or an unfilled. Without, an action, without action, it remains a dream, a want, and an unfilled, fulfilled desire. In Proverbs 13, 4, it says this. No matter how much a lazy person may want something, he will never get it. What? So no matter how much a lazy person wants something, he will never get it. Say, so what is the definition of lazy? The definition of lazy is that you don't take the action you should take. You always talk yourself out of the action you should take. That's all it is. So a person that has a want, but not willing to, she's, the person's too lazy to take the action, they will 
it will always remain a want. The want will never be fulfilled. She had to die. Look at this. It says, um, it says, a hard worker will get everything he wants. So he said, what are you saying? The one that works the plan will get everything he desires. What are you saying? The vision will come to pass. Come on, give God some praise. The vision will come to pass. And what we do is we do the possible and God does the impossible. Was it possible for her to dive and touch the hem of his garment? That was possible. Was it possible for her to heal herself? Impossible. Was it possible for the doctors to heal her? Impossible. Was it possible for her money to fix her? Impossible. But was it possible for her to dive and touch the hem of his garment? Possible. And was it, was it possible for Jesus to heal her? Possible. Wow. I love it. And the last thing about vision. Vision makes a way for a miracle. Vision makes a way for a miracle. Immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel her body that she had been in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Wow. Jesus realized, look at this, that healing power had gone out of him. There was healing power in him but she sucked it out of him. Like she sucked healing out of him. Jesus didn't even know what was going on. We should be, he didn't know. He didn't know. Because all he knew is healing power was sucked out of me. And he was looking around. Who did it? Who sucked that miracle out of me? Who pulled that breakthrough out of me? Who pulled that freedom out of me? Who pulled that marriage being restored out of me? Who pulled that salvation out of me? Who pulled it out of me? Who was it? And the disciples said, but, 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 but Jesus, that's kind of ridiculous. There's crowds all around you pressing on you. There's maybe thousands of people pressing on you. He goes, no, 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 no. There's somebody here who touched me and touched, I, I felt where the power came out of. Where did it come out of, Jesus? My robe. I felt it come out and boom, out the robe. You mean it came out the robe? How do you know it came out? I felt it come out right here. And so he said, well, who touched you? That's a ridiculous question. Everybody's touching you. Nah, her touch was, this person's touch was different. So the scripture says, Jesus realized someone touched her, but he kept on looking in verse 32 around to see who had done it. Someone done it. Who was the one that done it? That pulled that mirror. Then the frightened woman trembling and realization at the realization of what had happened to her came and fell to her knees in front of him and told him what she had done someone say action she did something if you if you want to break through you got to do something that means you got to get faith and you got to take action on it she did it and why is vision so important vision makes a way for a miracle this is what Jesus says he told her, she, he, and he said to her, he said to daughter, I love this. He didn't call her lady. He didn't call her woman. And you know why? Because the kind of faith that she had was the right kind of faith. She had saving faith. Because before she touched him, she wasn't a daughter. She was just a woman. But when she put her faith in Jesus, she became a child of God that qualifies for the inheritance of God, the fullness of God. <laughs> Daughter, and he was saying, I'm your father. Welcome home, baby. I've been waiting for this moment. I had healing for you. I had wellness for you. I had breakthrough for you. Someone out there, it's time for you to become a son and daughter of God, a son and daughter of Jesus Christ, and finally surrender your life. Aren't you tired 
of trying everything and it's still not working. What I need is just one more round, one more round with Jose. I think this time it will work. It's been 20 times it hasn't worked. It's been 20 years. That guy's coming in and out of your life. He's not, he doesn't want to commit to you. It always ends in pain. It always ends in abuse. I could fix him. I could fix him, Jesus. That's your issue right there of blood. And Jesus, this lady finally had to admit, I can't do this, but she put her faith in Jesus. And this was Jesus. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. I love this. 2020 is over. And could this be the day that God says, all I want you to do is get a vision and make me the vision. Yes, me, Jesus. Get a vision of everything you want. Delight yourself in me. Focus on me. Put me first in your life and I will add everything else to you. Yes, in this period of time, we are writing down every single goal, our business goals, our financial goals. We're writing down our, our ministry goals, our, our, our spiritual goals, our health goals. We're writing it all down. But and then we say, Jesus, I give you all these goals and I'm asking you, Lord, to help me. Give me a plan of action and help me to do what I've never been able to do. And I got a prayer request too, a whole list of prayer requests that I'm depending on you. I've been struggling with this thing for so many years and I'm done trying to fix it. I need your plan. I need your vision. And today I don't want to be on my plan anymore because my plan doesn't work. 12 years, it still hasn't worked. Year 13 will not be the fix. It's not the year 2021 that fixes your life. It's Jesus that fixes your life. And she had to come to the realization this moment is powerful because Jesus is here. And today, Jesus is here. So how do you get a vision to come to pass? Really simple. Just get a vision from God. You know, write the vision down. Take your vision serious. Get an action plan from God. Take action on that plan. And then hold on to it. Someone say, hold on to it. Hold on to that vision until God fulfills it. Because the ultimate fulfillment of that plan is God. Some of us, yes, you're taking action but you failed to include Jesus in it. And I would say this, you're trying too hard. Because God has a vision and he's the one that's going to fulfill it. He's the one that has the healing. He's the one that has the salvation. He's the one that has the freedom. He's the one that has your new beginning. Let's be like this lady. I would love to hear Jesus declare over your life. That situation is over. Next chapter. Wow. Wow. Some of us have been on a chapter of suffering and pain and abuse and addiction and fear and anxiety and depression. And you can't see a way out. The 12 years of suffering or the years that you've gone through, what you've gone through, has actually convinced you things can't change. And you go from place to place from thing to thing, from drug to drug, from job to job, from city to city, from relationship to relationship, trying to find your healing for your issue. She had an issue of blood, but we all have issues. I have issues, you have issues. And the only one that could fix my issues is Jesus Christ. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Today could be your day. So you were saying, Pastor, that's me. I feel like that lady with the issue of blood. I feel like, man, it's been 12 years and things haven't gotten better. It's been two years, three years, four years, 20 years. I don't know what it is. But things have not gotten better. Matter of fact, the truth is they've gotten worse. I've tried everything. I've tried education. I've tried money. I've tried things. I've tried cars. I've tried material things. I've tried persons. I've tried, I've tried it all. But I'm finding myself still having the same old issue. And it looks like my issue is compounding. My anger's getting worse. My, I'm becoming more impatient. I've lost vision. I feel like I'm breaking down in my mind. I feel overwhelmed. I feel all alone. I feel suicidal. If that's you, 
Jesus has come to your town, has come to your house, has come to your personal door of your heart. He says, I'm here. What I did for her and I did for all of them, I'll do for you. I've made myself available. I left heaven to come to earth to walk your street, to walk into your home, to walk down to your address and let you know I'm here. Put your faith in me. I've told you what I did for her because I really want to do it for you. I pray that today will be your day of salvation, eternal life, forgiveness of your sins, and start a new life with Jesus Christ as your leader, as your savior, as your healer, as your provider, as your eternal life. If that's you, you tried everything and you feel like the lady with issue of blood, you're thinking to yourself, okay, there is a better day. This thing can be fixed. It can turn around. God will provide. It's going to be okay. It is going to be okay if you place your faith in Jesus or you could walk away like many other people that were in, had issues in those days. Never place their faith in Jesus or maybe had a dream but never took action. Your action today is a prayer. That's how you humble yourself and reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Pray. Let's pray together. Bow your heads, close your eyes, whether you're in an auditorium, only a few people in here, or you're at home, or in your car, or you're in a break room, or you're by yourself right now. Maybe underneath the tree, you're sitting there watching this video. Jesus is there with you. He wants to take away all the depression, all the fear, all the darkness. There's vision for you. There's a purpose for you. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Repeat after me, say, Jesus, I know. I can't fix myself. I've tried. I feel empty, lost. I need your help. I know I've done it my way. I know that I've sinned against myself, against you and others. Forgive me, Lord. Jesus, I believe this. You came to earth. You lived a perfect life. Then you suffered and you died to pay the price for all the wrong I've done so that I could be forgiven. Forgive me. I want to be your child. I receive the free gift of eternal life. This is a new day. This is a new beginning. And from this day forward, I will follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand at home. Here, let's give him a hand. Now, if you said that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, I got good news for you. This is what God says. You've been made well. You've been made whole. That life of misery that you lived, it's over. I'm not saying that you won't have challenges, struggles, difficulties and loss in life. You will. But there's a difference. God will be with you. Jesus will be with you. You're going to get through it. And then one day, we'll be in a place in heaven with Jesus where there's no pain. There's no suffering. There's no addiction. There's none of the stuff that we deal with today. No COVID. No deaths. It's all gone. That's our eternal home. We're passing through. And I have faith and I have a vision that even if you've lost a lot loved one in this season, this is my vision. I'm going to see my mama again. Those believers that have passed on, you will see them again in your future. That's vision. And what keeps you going through the hard times, the difficulties, the struggles, this is what keeps you going. You're tenacious because you have a vision that will come to pass and it's worth fighting for. Jesus had a vision for you. He fought for you. You were worth it all. What kept him on that cross? His vision that one day, You'd be with him now and have a relationship with him now and forever. Today's your day. Congratulations if you gave your life to Jesus. If you said that prayer and you meant it, you gave your life to Jesus, we have a website, Action. Take action. Vision without action produces no results. It's ineffective. But take some action. I got saved. Go on the browser. Put it in there. I got saved.com. I got saved.com. Put your information in there. 
and then we'll contact you for your next step. Because really your next step is we have growth classes, we want to help you grow online and in person. And also your next step is to get baptized and we'll show you what all that means. But welcome to God's Family Church. If you have any prayer requests, make sure you put them online. We have teams, moderators are online that will pray with you. They'll pray with you and agree with you for your breakthrough. Whatever it is, we love you and God loves you. Remember this, if God is for you, who could come against you? So get ready. This Sunday is going to be awesome too. This Sunday at 9 and 11 o'clock, tune in online or come live in person. At our 11 o'clock service, come early to get a seat. We had overflow this last Sunday. So get a seat. We're practicing social distancing. Three seats that separate each party. Everyone wears masks um, when they come in. Um, we're, we're doing everything. We're taking temperature checks. We're making sure it's a safe place. And I just thank God. It's been going great. We'd love to see you here. Children's ministry is ready to go. We love you. We want to take care of you. God bless you. Love you guys.